There's always a desire to find a common link between the story of Hanukkah and the story of Yosef and his brothers for the very simple reason that every single year Hanukkah falls out over this story, either from Parshas Vayeshev, Parshas Miketz, or Parshas Vayigash, always coincide with Shabbos Hanukkah. Uh, this Shabbos is not Shabbos Hanukkah, but it's like Erev Hanukkah, and then the following Shabbos Miketz will be Shabbos Hanukkah. And so I wanted to, and there's, there are numerous uh, linkings between these two stories, but I, I'd like to point out perhaps another, another link you notice that the Torah describes Yaakov Avinu's love for his son Yosef. The Torah says in Parshas Vayesha, the Yisrael, Ahavis Yosef mikol banav ki ven zikunim lahulo. He loved his son more than all of his other children because he was his ven zikunim. He was the child of his old age. He, Yosef was born as one of the last, right? Yosef and Binyamin were the last children born. The Asalo Kisonis Pasim. And so he made for him a coat of many colors. And um, now, there are many ways for a parent to express their love to a child. There are many ways. You know, when I want to express my love to my children, I may, you know, sit down and, and learn with them. If I have time, maybe I'll take them to a ball game. Um, take them shopping, doing different activities. Yaakov's expression of love for his son was to make him a coat of many colors. And there, of course, there are many messages here. And also, let's understand that the love that Yaakov has for his other sons is quite profound. But there's a special love that you have for this youngest of children. And th those of you who have older children and younger children will probably be able to associate with what I'm going to say. When you have your first child, think back all those years ago when you had your first child, you let your child, if, especially if it's a boy, you know, which I certainly is my frame of reference for the most part. <laughs> you don't care. Let them, you know, let them hang by the chandelier, let them do this, let them do that, because if they fall, if they fall, he'll learn a lesson, he'll brush himself off, self off, he'll figure it out, he'll get a few bumps, take his lumps, and uh, he'll be all the better for it. You, 20 years down the road when you have your last child, or whenever, whatever that gap that you've decided is gonna be, you're a different person. You got a few uh, gray hairs, you're a little bit frazzled, and you're a little bit more protective over your children. Oh, <laughs> watch out, watch out, he's gonna slip, he's gonna fall, right? And the, the protectiveness that a parent has over a benzakunim is much more than you have when you're younger and you're more fearless. You get older, you, you realize that the world is a darker and scarier place and then, therefore, your ben zakunim has that much more care and concern. And also, you realize, this is the last. I better make sure I don't mess up like I did with my other kids. And so there's a greater sense of protectiveness and, and uh, concern. Can anyone relate to this, or am I, is this just my own personal experience? All right, I don't know. Anyway, I wanted to, so I, it's in that vein. But let's think about for a second, let's think about for a second why specifically an article of clothing is what Yaakov chooses to give to Yosef as an expression of his love. And this is where I feel that there's an important linkage to the story of Hanukkah. Next week's Haftorah, not this week's Haftorah, but the Haftorah for Shabbos Hanukkah is from the book of Zechariah in the third chapter. And the Navi has an image, has a vision in that he describes, and it describes Yehoshua Kohen Gadol, who was one of the first high priests of the Second Temple period. And in this vision that Zechariah has, the vision is Yehoshua Haya Lavush 
בגדים צועים ועומד לפני המלאך. That יהושע is wearing dirty clothes and is standing before an angel. And why dirty clothes? What do dirty clothes represent in the image, in the vision? Rashi, quoting Targum Yonasan, tells us, Kitargumo, it's in source number three, Havulei binin dinaspin lahon nashim dolo kishirin lekuhunta, that his sons had assimilated. They had married girls, married women, that were not kosher for the kahuna, either halachically not kosher or below the level of yichus, that would be befitting the high priesthood family. And Yehoshua was punished because he didn't properly protest against what his sons were doing. He didn't say, sons, choose more wisely, choose more correctly. And so therefore, what does the clothing represent? The clothing represents his children. The clothing represents the forces of assimilation coming in and creeping in and, and representing a flaw, a weakness, a succumbing to external influences that Yehoshua Kohen Gadol was guilty of. And if you take a look uh, what in the next Pasuk, in Pasuk Dalid, Vaya'an Vayomer, El Ha'omedim Lefanav Leimor, the angel cries out to all of those standing in this vision, he says, Hasiru habigadim hatsawi me alav, remove the dirty clothes from off of Yehoshua. Vayomer <coughs> love, and the angel tells him, Re'ei he'evarti me olecha avonecha ve'halbesh osecha machalatzos. Behold, I have removed from off of you your sin, which is what the dirty clothes represent, and now you have to wear machalatzos and the wearing of... Um, uh, of these, uh, of these, of this, of this kind of vestment, of this kind of clothing, and therefore the Malach says, "Va'omar yasimu tzaniv tahor al rosho." And I said, Zechariah is saying, "I have an idea. Let's place a pure, fresh, new turban on his head." Va'yasimu tzaniv tahor al rosho, and that's what they did. Va'yalbishuhu bigadim umalach Hashem omed, and they put on new clothes upon the Kohen Gadol. And the angel is overseeing this all. And, and that's really the vision of the rehabilitation of the Kohen Gadol, who is now has his dirty clothes removed and is clothed with his brand new clothes. Now, what does that vision represent for the Jews who are coming back from the diaspora, from the Babylonian exile after 70 years in, in captivity? They're coming back to Eretz Yisrael, to a new era of Jewish greatness, the Second Temple era. What does this vision, what is it supposed to represent? Well, what it's really supposed to represent is that the Jewish people in Galus have, be, have been unfortunately influenced in a negative way by their external environment. And their clothing, so to speak, their external aspect has been negatively affected thereby. So whenever we want to describe how a person externally has been negatively affected, will you talk about it in terms of clothing? Now, if we are going to understand the idea of clothing that way, then perhaps we might understand why Yaakov's expression of love to his youngest child, his Ben Zakunim, is to make for him a beautiful coat. Because the whole idea of creating a beautiful coat is to take something that's purely external and to try to have it affect someone in a positive way so that sometimes when a person internally does not feel inspired, sometimes you can use external stimuli. Just like you can use external stimuli to harm a person, you can use external stimuli to improve a person, to inspire a person to become a better person. We know from the Medrash that the reason why it's called ketonet pasim, a tunic of pasim, <laughs> some say that the word pasim means of many colors. But also others learn in the Medrash that the word pasim comes from the word palm. The palm of the hand is a pasyad. This is a palm. And the reason why it's called ketonet pasim is because the sleeves of the tunic went down to his palms. That's 
what is mentioned in the Medrash, Shahita Magat al Pas Yado, that the tunic went down all the way to his palms. Now, what is that image? What is that supposed to represent for us? What's the significance of a tunic coming down to Yosef's palms? It's there to protect him. It's there to keep him out of trouble. It's there to make sure that whatever Yosef is going to do with his hands, he's going to lift up his hand before he does something. He's going to look at the coat that my father made for me, and he's going to remember, my father is here with me. I need to be protected by my father. Ironically, when you think about what the fate of Yosef was, what happens to Yosef? The brothers meet up with Yosef, and the first thing that they do is they pull the coat off of his back, and they sell him to slavery without his coat. They tear up the coat and they dip it in blood, and they use that to show their father that Yosef is dead. And it would seem to me that part of the trials that Yosef had to go through was, look, Yaakov was very, very protective of his son. He saw that his son may have maybe even harbored certain negative character traits, because as we know from the beginning of the Parsha, Vuhunar es b'nei Vilha es b'nei Zilpah, that he was a young man, he acted like a boy, and he was childish in certain ways, he was immature, and his father wanted to cultivate and groom him. But Hashem had other plans. Hashem's plans were that Yosef, only a person who is weak, can be cultivated from external stimuli like your father is trying to do for you. You're going to need to be, you're going to need to have your baptism through fire, as it were. You're going to have to really prove your own metal without the interference and protectiveness of your father. And that protectiveness that's going to try and keep you a mama's boy or a papa's boy, we're taking that off of you. We're throwing you to the wolves. We're throwing you down to Egypt. And the only way that you're going to be able to survive is if you develop within yourself an internal integrity and strength that is going to allow you to stand up to the trials of life. And that sometimes is necessary. Sometimes despite the best intentions of a parent to protect their child from the negative influences of the outside world, sometimes the best way for a child to be schooled is to somehow be exposed, whether for good or for bad, but through that exposure and through that being thrust to the wolves, the child is, be is able to grow and emerge as a greater person. It doesn't always work. But in Yosef's case, because Hashem had a destiny for Yosef, to be the beacon of light to the rest of the world and to purify the rest of the world, Yosef could not be this sheltered and protected young man. He had to develop those core strengths within himself so that he could be able to be an effector, not an affected, to be able to change the world and not have the world change him. Now, when we go to the story of Hanukkah, uh, I think that we're going to be able to see a connection here as well. Why do we read about this story of Yehoshua Kohen Gadol. Well, first of all, it's an image of what is happening at the very beginning of the Second Temple era. And part of the vision of Zechariah later on in that chapter is a vision of the menorah. And that certainly, ostensibly, on the face value, is the connection between Zechariah's vision and the whole story of Hanukkah. But I think it's also important to remember that the Jews who were coming from the diaspora were in some way negatively affected by their diaspora environment. And so therefore the changing of the clothes represents how there's a call by the prophets to the people. It's not just the Kohen Gadol who has to change his clothes. We all have to change our clothes. We all have to now demonstrate that we are completely committed to Judaism. We are com completely committed to Torah and to reject all of the assimilative forces and assimilative ideas that we've gotten over the course of the last 70 years. But with the story of Hanukkah, Hanukkah is not about externalities. Just to the contrary, the story of Hanukkah is about finding a cruise of oil that externally is protected by the seal of the Kohen Gadol, and yet represents the most inner core of every single Jew. The oil and the light that we, we light on Hanukkah is representative 
of the internal, not the external of the Jewish people. Where do we light the menorah? We light the menorah in the Heichal, in the, in the one of the innermost recesses of the temple. And it represents the light that, one, that we have internally within each and every Jew, that not only are we able to light for ourselves, but we have to take that light and put it in the dark windowsill of our house so that we can illuminate the darkness of the world around us. And so what I believe perhaps one of the reasons for reading the, the Haftorah from Zechariah over Hanukkah is to demonstrate that when we came back from Gullus, we were in a very compromised state. Our clothes were dirty, so to speak. Externally, we had been negatively affected. But the calling of Hanukkah was, and it was sort of like being thrown to the wolves because we got pushed to the wall by the Greeks. And there was more and more assimilative force even during the Second Temple period when we were supposed to be our own people and we were supposed to grow in Torah and Yiddishkeit. But unfortunately, what happened is that we became more and more impure and the temple became defiled as a result. And therefore, we were, so to speak, stripped of the kasonas pasim, that protective cover that really the Navi wanted us to have when we came into Eretz Yisrael. And it was the only way that we could rectify ourselves is the same way that Yosef was able to rectify himself, was to find that inner core within ourselves, to reject the negative ways that we had been affected from the external, from the externalities of the world in Eretz Yisrael by the Greek Hellenistic influence, and to really show our metal and to show our worth and to show our inner strength so that we could shine it outwards and become like Yosef. The Shem Yishmuel says, says this similar idea at the very bottom of your page. He says in his commentary to Hanukkah, we're just going to read a small snippet of it. He says, Ki koach ha'umos hu b'chitzonios bilvad. He says, the influence of the other nations to really affect us is, is from the external. Ach ha'yevanim sh'yesh lem koach ha'chachma sh'hi ne'elem es ha'yisa lahem sh'lita gam al-pinimios. He says the strength of the Greeks was ex exceptionally threatening because whereas from other assimilative forces were only affected externally, <laughs> the Greeks had the ability to permeate into our inner core because they affected the very way that we were thinking. And that's what is represented by the fact that they defiled all the oil in the temple. The Heichal represents the innermost chamber of the temple, Kibzoar Akadosh. We'll skip the next couple of lines. Ushemanim Shebehechal, go to the second to last line. He says, therefore, the oil that is in the temple, who bechinas hachachma shebeseichal, that represents wisdom that is part of the intellect. Bechishagavru Yisrael nahapochu. And therefore, the Jewish people became victorious by turning everything upside down. So that not only were we able to reject the Hellenistic influences that came that permeated to our very core, but we were able to go from inside and now work on the outside as well. And so, in other words, instead of being affected from externalities that permeated to our very core we were able to transform our core, which is represented by the oil, and now use that light and shine it externally. And this is represented by the Hanukkah oil, by the light of the Hanukkah candles, where it's a mitzvah to place it at your, door, at your doorway so that it shines in the darkness outside. So ultimately, there are two ways for a person to be rehabilitated. You can be rehabilitated by changing your clothes. And therefore, if you've been externally negatively influenced, you have to try and say, like we do, chitzonios, mahapchines, apnimios, that exter external influences can change either for the good or for the bad a person's internal machinations and workings and integrity and so forth. But there are times when we don't have the advantage of those positive external influences, which is what Hanukkah really represents. That's what Yosef represents. And therefore, we have to sometimes, when we're pushed into this very, very desperate situation, we have to find that inner core within ourselves. 
turn ourselves around and use the inner core of rehabilitation and push to the outside and change our external reality as well. That's what Yosef succeeded in doing. That's what the Chashmonoim succeeded in doing. <laughs> That's the reason why Yosef could not go down to Egypt with his Kasonis Pasim. He can't be protected from his father. He can't be protected from the external. He has to work from the inside and move and shine outside. There are times in life when we have to change our external situations and we have the liberty and the luxury to do so. There are some people who flourish in a much more protected environment. And I'm sure you know of certain situations in Jewish communal living where living in a protected environment, especially for children, is a much more um, healthy kind of scenario. But there also are times in Jewish communal life where we can't afford to live in the cloistered, sheltered environment because there, then we could never realize our destiny, which is to be that light unto the nations and to affect and not just be affected so we have to know when, when we're supposed to practice what. Yes, Hanukkah is certainly, though, the time that we're supposed to be the effectors and not the affected. Yes? No, I was just thinking that Yosef must have internalized the message his father gave him of the Sonus Passover, because when he was being pursued by Asia's Holy Fire, doesn't it say that it was the most diokno shall of it that saved him? Yes, it does. We just had that in the Dafyomi today. He saw the image of his father in the mirror. But some of the Mephorshim point out, or the window it says, some opinions in the Gemara point out that Yosef was identical to his father. And, his and, and really what he saw was he saw his own face. And so it's not so much that his father was protecting him but it was the lessons that he had learned from his father that he himself had internalized. This was his moment to become Yosef. This was his moment of reckoning to say, who am I going to choose to become? Not because my father made me a protective coat, but because I am Yosef. Okay, have a great day, everyone. I don't see you.